guys welcome back to my channel so today we are going for the barn um, and it is a quite a rainy and windy day it's a little bit of a windstorm out there um, so my horse is already in As you can see here some horses are out there um, they're still doing good but hazel didn't last apparently more than 20 seconds so that's why she was already in So as always, when I actually go to the barn, I have a full agenda in my head of things that I want to do with Hazel, um, things that I want to work on. So usually on the weekend are my practice days. Um, so I'm basically practicing on her weakest point from um, the lesson that we had this, the same week. Uh, unfortunately, well, uh, on that day, I wasn't able to actually fully execute my plan here because the wind was just very very intense and therefore um, I was anticipating to be um, a lot of noise in the arena and therefore didn't end up riding but instead went on for a full grooming um, for Hazel here um, still have to do a lot of care on her just because um, I do fancy a long mane and a long healthy tail if possible and therefore I still have to work a lot on that to kind of cultivate it So for those of you that are uh, that have been with us in the past, the first thing that I always do is take care of Hazel's hoof. Um, you guys will notice that she has bell boots on, usually inside as well as outside. She does have shoes on all four, and therefore she requires shoes um, uh, bell boots all the time. So I always bring a lot of stuff with me uh, as well at the barn when I go over for the weekends. So I would bring extra blankets. Uh, stock up on uh, feed, supplements, whatever I need to bring, I usually bring it over in the weekend. Um, so I will just fill up this uh, container here and that will be for the chia seeds. Um, she does eat quite a fair bit of chia seeds um, and therefore she just needs to top up here just a little bit more to make sure we make it till the end of the month. the bell boots are off and we are topped up on the supplements I've basically emptied my bag with all the things that I had um, I can just basically carry along with the grooming so the first thing that I do is loosen her um, jacket if you will or blanket um, just to uh, give her some a little bit more room as well as to um, get her conditioned or acclimated to the weather that's inside um, since it is really cold and windy outside it's not that bad inside I must say so first thing we do is pick up the hooves and clean them up real nice. Um, it is fairly muddy at this time of the year. As you guys all know here in Canada, we do get a lot of uh, rain in the, in the fall as well as in the spring and therefore we get a lot of mud. So um, that's what I'll go and do and just clean up these hooves real nice.
so that's definitely the first thing I always do is take care of her hooves as much as possible. Um, I really want to know what's in there, what's collected, if there are rocks stuck in there. Like that's something I always like to cover my bases and make sure that I get that done first, so I don't forget or carry, uh, you know, carry along with something else. Um, it's just to make sure that at least I know my horse is comfortable there, and therefore we're gonna be good for a little bit. So for those of you that have been following us as well for a while, you will notice that Hazel um, is really good at giving her feet, but most likely in the back of her um, her back feet are basically um, doing much better. So some of you might know I am doing some corrective chewing in the back and we're trying to get those toes to face um, towards the front instead of on the side there. Um, as you can see, the gap is actually slowly, slowly closing in. So I'm really, really happy with the work we've been doing here in the back. Um, there is one foot that's almost like basically the right direction, the other one will take time, but it's it's okay. It's it's really hard to get all of the feet done at once. Um, it's a bit like braces for human, for your teeth. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. You really have to um, put the shoes on at a certain angle um, and it does take time within growths um, to just get the hoof to kind of turn around. Um, but yeah, great job here for my farrier, really happy with his services. Um, because he's helped, he, he's able to help us, and it's been maybe four or five shoeing, four four shoeings that I've done with him, and already there's a huge, huge, huge difference. So the next thing that I will do here, it would be uh, the tail. So she does have a tail bag on for those that were there last week. I did put on their first tail bag of the season. And now since she has her winter blanket on, we're going to be able to carry and change the tail bag. Um, as I was saying in last week's vlog, so basically I go and I change the tail bag once a week. Uh, one for hygiene purposes. I like to keep them clean, not full of urine. And I also like to know what's underneath, so you really have to uh, remove the braid and um, make sure that um, it is clean underneath. So you really want to make sure that you get that um, undone and double check everything because if, if you just leave it there for too long, you might just end up with no tail at all. So once the tail bag is removed, I'll go ahead and just uh, remove the braid that I've done here, check out the state of the, of the hair, make sure that it's good, healthy, and as you can see, even though the tail, um, the actual braid was really thin, you can see there's actually volume in there. Um, it's a full horse tail, um, and uh, you'll see I'll just proceed with brushing it and you'll see the volume that's in there. So I um, pick up uh, stiff 
brush um, so it's not like a, a brush that has little kind of pegs on it it's really like a stiff brush and I'm just going over the tail starting with the, the, the end of the tail um, and moving my weight all the way up uh, to the tailbone so that way um, when it's tangled you want to just get from the bottom to the top of the tail just to go uh, slowly if not you're gonna like remove a lot of hair going the other way around so just take your time and go section by section in the tail and um, clean it up um, really nicely one kind of strand of hair at a time there's no rush One important thing to do uh, when you uh, want to grow a tail is one, the tail bag really helps, but two, you have to make sure that the dog or the tail, or if you will, um, the point where the tail is connected to the horse's body is really clean, um, free of debris, dandruff, and all that irritant stuff, because if not, the horse is going to rub their tail um, on their stall door, on the walls, on their um, outdoor paddock fence, if ever. Uh, they need it so you really want to avoid like itchiness there and also by brushing it you're creating a lot of um, like you're helping the blood flow to just basically circulate in the tail and that really promotes um, a healthy tail a healthy skin and as well as healthy health, um, hair growth so you really want to make sure that you get that also uh, brushed all the way up So do as I say, not what as I do. Um, I definitely do not recommend to be full out in the back of your horse. Uh, obviously, this is my own horse, and I've owned her for now four years. I pretty much know her reaction. And if you can see at the back here, if you look at both of her back legs, there's one that's bent. Um, that just means that she's relaxed right now, so she's not gonna look at striking out and kicking my face off. Um, but if you're uh, new and so if you don't know, you really want to stay out. Wait from uh, their bump. Here and cut the tail fairly short. So you'll see usually, um, let's say it would be for a show, competition, something important, I would get her to stand square um, to dock her tail just because that's when you see the full length. But I had an idea of exactly where I wanted to cut the tail and I wanted it fairly short. The reason why I want Hazel to have a short tail is, first of all, um, we're going into winter and um, there'll be plenty of time for the tail to grow for the show season. Second of all, the tail had like multiple layers in it and I just really wanted to trim it like just one good way across. It's been like years in the making that I'm just waiting for that tail to grow at least till this point so I can cut it properly. And um, the other reason is, as you can see, I have a mask on my face. Uh, we are maybe entering phase uh, two of confinement. And um, the last time that I had Hazel in confinement and I couldn't have access to my horse, uh, well, it, it um, really uh, did a, like, a lot of bad stuff for her tail. Basically, she ended up losing a quarter of her tail um, during that period of time just by neglect. So I uh, really want to cover all my bases here. I see if we have to go in full confinement once again, um, I want to be sure um, that the tail is going to be at a manageable length, that she's not going to step on it or anything, and that will really, really help 
um, keeping the tail as it is because we want to hit the show ground um, as soon as we are able to. So as you saw quickly, I did clean up her um, her private parts, if you will, um, because um, that's another thing that can cause them to rub their bun is if their um, you know privates are itchy, if there is like poop stuck or dried out there, you really want to clean it um, so they don't rub their tail um, against the wall once again to kind of remove the itchiness. So I'll carry along here and um, I will go along and braid the tail. So we can put it back into the tail bag. As you can see, there's a lot of shavings, um, but it's like nothing too offensive to the tail. The tail is in fairly good condition. Um, there's not a lot of urine on it, so I'm really, really happy with that. So I'll go ahead and put my detangler of choice here um, on her tail and that will help to um, finish up the whole process of the brushing and everything. I do want to make sure that the tail is as tangle free as possible before I even attempt to braid the tail. Um, if not, there's really no point. You're just going to keep mats into a braid and that's not going to really help with the growth of the tail. Um, just for your uh, own personal knowledge, a tail from a horse will grow about one centimeter every seven to nineteen days. So it's about a centimeter um, or two centimeter, if you will, a month, if you will, um, or a month and a half. And so, uh, according to my calculation, I'm thinking we're gonna have um, the tail exactly where I want it to be. Uh, by spring so I'm really really excited to see what's gonna happen um, I will have new horse products coming in shortly uh, for those of you that have been following us on Instagram I have been sponsored by Equifuse and I can't wait to showcase the products for you because these will do wonders for her tail and help it grow and be full uh, by uh, the spring as well so I can't wait to show you uh, these videos so stay tuned for that So here's just a little fast forward of me braiding the tail quickly. It's definitely easier for me, more manageable without all this wispy hair um, and broken ends type of thing. So I'm really, really happy with actually propping her tail that short. Um, it makes the braid even shorter, which is even better. Um, I don't think I've shown you that much her um, actual stall, but it is quite full in shavings and the reason being is that once the floor is not level properly so it does affect if ever the horse wants to lay down so to compensate that they just do put a lot of shaving I would say there's at least four inches of shaving in her stall um, and what happened is before is her tail was dragging right on the shaving so if you, she backs up she could just step on her tail no problem um, so that's another thing, you don't want them to step on their tail to just pull the hair out. Here as I actually demonstrate for you how I put the tail bag. So first you're going to put the tail in the tail bag and then you're going to bring it all the way up. You're going to split one of the branches of your tail. So as you can see that's a full branch and I'm just splitting it in half. And I'm gonna pass the tail bag through. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. So once I've branch, split it in half, and put the tail bag through. So once that is done, I will go ahead and make a simple knot right there to just hold the, the tension in the tail bag. Just like that. And then you will go at the back of the tail but of the tail and do the same thing a simple knot one one there as well so that's done and then you'll go forward so back to the front and then you'll do two simple knots there um, in order to make sure that it um, stays so a secure knot 
and um, I make sure that it's not too tight so the bone is right there and I have about at least an inch an inch and a half from the tailbone um, that's where it sits and I'm just gonna go once more and just make a simple knot there as well so that's how you put a tail bag on your horse Next care is fully, it's really simple. Um, so what I do is I go over her sweaty spots. So during the week, I uh, do ride hazel for a lesson, but I also have a rider that comes and ride hazel as well. And um, what happened is with the horse sweat, um, it does create sometimes irritation. Um, and in order to um, alleviate those irritations, so what I do is I just add moisture to the skin. Obviously, you want to brush the, the fur really well, like the skin really well, to remove the salt generated by the sweat. But you also want to moisturize it so you don't have a dandruffy um, bald spot happening there. So we've been putting macadamia oil and I think it's mixed um, with castor oil as well. So I will go ahead and give her a nice treat. She's been really, really good for me. I was able to trim her tail, brush her little... Um, like sweat spots if you will and now we'll just give her a nice um, treats from the Northern Equestrian Co. So for those of you that have been following here or on Instagram you are aware that I do have a sponsor and it's the Northern Equestrian Co. brand. They are amazing horse cookies with like fun little pattern that you can give to your horse. This one was the birthday collection um, as I actually my birthday was last month and um, Hazel's not done her yet. Uh, her treats obviously but um, they have awesome stuff the birthday collection does come in an ape, uh, apple flavor and all the other treats are in mint flavor so I will invite you to go to the website I will put the link in the description down below and don't forget to uh, take note of my promo code as well before you order so you can save some money The next item of care here are the hooves themselves. So I will go around with my, my hoof pick and some hoof oil um, and I use the bikes, I think it's called, um, hoof balm or hoof uh, product here and it really helps with like cracked hooves, um, hooves that had abscesses or um, that have white line disease or things like that. It really helps to kind of keep it nice and, and um, Stuff and supple and optimal condition, so that's why I opted for this one. Um, Hazel did have an, an, a bad hoof abscess in the front um, about a month ago, um, and that's why I ordered this product. And now I'm just gonna apply it all winter. It's basically gonna help um, prevent and treat some of the um, hoof ailments. So I'm really, um, really happy with this product. And as you can see, Hazel is quite fancy. So if I can't get it from one side, what I do is I just let her be bring your uh, hoof up and when I'm on the other side you'll see I'll start cleaning the hoof that I have missed. So nice clean up. You'll see me using my left hand. Not my best but um, it still does the job. So you really want to go inside the or underneath the hoof and on the, the bulb so all the way to the back of the heel here to make sure that it's um, covered by the product. And then you go over the top as well, um, and that will give a full hoof care all the way to the coronary vent, so all the way where uh, up to where there's actual hair. Um, and then I will just moisturize the whole thing. And finally, the back legs. So since the other one is actually put down now, I can go ahead and finish up the, the paint job on this one. And once again, you really want to touch these um, these bulbs. So I dropped it just wiping it before I could actually uh, put it back in the product and that's already the last hook
next hair item is the mane so I do um, like to have a long mane on Hazel for now we're not showing we're not going anywhere and for me it's just an accomplishment to basically have a nice long mane on this horse um, she had a very um, like straggly mane when I had her and then I just let it grow and let it grow some more and I just really love the style so um, especially in the summer to just leave it all loose and just start riding with the wind and everything you see the mane uh, going up and down and I just really like that look so um, <laughs> it's probably gonna be the last year that she has her long mane um, so I'll miss it but in the meantime I'm gonna still take care of it really important if you have a long mane do braid it because if you ride with a long mane you will notice that the hair of the mane they get kind of stuck into your reins and um, with the friction too it might cause like the mane to map up um, so it's really nice to just braid it and keep it still and facing down so I really uh, encourage you to braid it if that's what your goal is And of course, if you are like me and you decide to grow it, please, please, please um, undo your braids once a week and rebraid the mane as well. You don't want to leave a mane all straggly and all bad looking and full of dirt, dandruff and, and all of that. You really want to clean it, keep it nice, um, nice and tidy and that will help you greatly in growing your mane. So um, this is about the third year that we have the mane growing and we have about three to four inches that grow every year. So that is already it for Hazel's uh, care routine. So as you can see, it's pretty extensive in the winter. I do like to take care of my horse a lot in the summer, of course, but in the winter, I just add extra steps such as moisturizing the skin, um, cleaning up the tail, braiding the tail, putting tail bags, um, braiding the mane, um, and everything just to keep it optimal. And as you can see, I did put a little bit of sport of moisturizing um, potion right there in her mane because they do get dry and dandruffy and um, I like to keep our skin as moisturized as possible to avoid like having a nice patchy dry skin in the spring. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you've learned something new, um, at least if it is about tail bag, putting a tail bag on your horse, or just um, how I care about a horse in the winter, um, because there is quite a bit of difference between the winter and the summer. Um, obviously the airflow is different on the horse because we are putting a lot of blankets on them. Um, and that uh, alter their um, quality um, of like for their skin basically so you really want to have add more moisture into there and just make sure that the skin is conditioned as well as the hooves and um, the underneath of the hooves because it's the same thing they will tend to dry up in the winter um, so that's my thorough routine for um, my horse in the winter so I'll see you guys very very soon bye